In our last episode, we lifted anchor in Shelter Bay and transited the Gatun Locks. We arrived in Gatun Lake late afternoon where we spent a night on a giant moran ball. Today we continue with the rest of our journey across the Gatun Lake to transit the Pedro Miguel Lock and the Miraflores Locks, and we will arrive in the Pacific Ocean. That's Edwin, our new pilot. Under the guidance of our new advisor, Edwin, we start our passage on Gatun Lake. Two worlds collide here, one being the major cis shipping route, joining the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans, and the other, raw jungle vegetations, where monkeys, crocodiles and jaguars reside. We hear monkeys and spot crocodiles sunning themselves on the bank of the lake. The shipping is impressive. Huge tankers pass by going in both directions. We feel so small and vulnerable alongside them as we motor across one of the largest man-made lakes in the world. The cost for one of these ships to transit the canal varies between 135,000 and 260,000 US dollars. Thankfully, the cost for Macara to transit the canal was a lot less, 2,344 US dollars, which includes the agent fee and the rental of fenders and lines. We had our own line handlers to help with the transit, but you can also hire line handlers if you don't have the crew yourself. Crocodile spotting. We needed to cover 33 kilometers to take us from Gatun Locks across Gatun Lake to the Pedro Miguel Locks. Everyone has a turn at the helm. Yeah. As we approach the Pedro Miguel locks, Edwin instructs us on the process we need to follow. When we transited the locks yesterday, we were tied up against a tug. Today, we'll be transiting on our own, with a ship behind us. We will need a line handler on each corner of the car. It should be. Well, no, it's only one lock this time. The log beside us was a ship which was carrying yachts and motorboats. It was quite funny to see them going down with us. Well done guys, well done team! Yeah, and we're going to have some lunch. And this has been such a cool experience. And it was quite exciting coming in here. We had the wind behind us, so the stern was getting blown all over the place. And you've got to come in super slow. But we're tied up now, and it's great. We're going to have some lunch. We've got a great big ship coming in behind us. And once he's tied up, then the locks can open, and we're going to go through. So stay with us. It's about to be quite incredible, really. Take a look at that. I mean, you know, we're going to drop down, I don't know how many feet that is, but the ship's height um, down to the next level. And then from here, we go to the Mira Flores dock, and there, uh, sorry, lock, and there are two more locks to go through over there. We're about to have lunch. Stopping, waiting for our partner ship over there to come in behind us. We're the only yacht in the lock, so we're tied up just with four lines, and we're in the middle, so no nesting and no rafting up, which is quite good. And everyone's having lunch. Say hi! Hi! <laughs> hi. You must get all sorts of food, okay? All different foods. From different cultures. Hi. Yeah, the 
The massive lock gates weigh 662 tonnes. The hinges themselves each weigh 16.7 tonnes. The gates range between 14 to 35 metres high. Due to the huge tidal range, the tallest gates are at Mina Flores Lock and they're 2.13 metres thick in order to hold back the huge amount of water. From the shore, a light line with a monkey's fist weight on the end is thrown onto Mokara. Our line handlers then attach this light line to our heavy mooring lines. They walk along the dock at the same speed as Mokara. It was quite a long walk for them. At the right time, the team on the dock pull the light lines in until they have our heavy duty lines on the shore. As the water level drops, each line handler slackens their line slightly to keep Mokara safely in the centre of the lock. Eventually the huge gates open. We pull on the thick mooring lines until they are back on the boat, keeping the thinner, lighter lines attached to the line handlers on shore. Makara moves forward and the shore line handlers walk along with us to our next lock. Once in position, the whole process of securing Makara starts again. The last gates of the Mina Flores locks open and we're officially in the Pacific Ocean. And we are in the Pacific! Woohoo! Not yet! Oh my, yeah we are! As soon as the gate went like this, Nathan. Welcome to the Pacific! Woohoo! We motor towards the busy dock of Panama City, removing all the lines and fenders and getting ready to hand them back to the agent in Balboa Yacht Club. Those are the naughty tug drivers in the background, the one that uh, put us out in the very first lock. So I'm glad to see the back of them. This iconic bridge was the first bridge built after the completion of the canal. It connects the continent of South and North America and serves as an important part of the Inter-American Highway, which runs all the way along the Pacific from Alaska to Chile. Just after the bridge, we found a mooring ball in Balboa Yacht Club and a small boat turns up to collect our fenders and lines. Our amazing transit was complete, but will still remain in our memories forever.